video. Thank you, Granny Fanny, for your question, your inquiry, or curiosity about my opinion regarding the difference between Lekka and Lava Rock. So if you're new to my channel, this is what I do. Even though I may have covered the subject before, there's always a good refresher and setting up the, the circumstances differently. There are always little tweaks and avenues with different subjects, even though the question might appear the same. The context behind that may be completely different. I am very happy to be able to make videos based on requests such as these, or if they just are easily answered in the comments section, then I will be very happy to elaborate further in the comments, simply because it all might be interesting for somebody else to read as well. But if it warrants a video, I don't mind if the video has to be 30, 40 minutes or five, 10 minutes, that's not the point. Whatever comes across as more interesting. So Granny Fanny, your Lekka versus Lava Rock request begins right now. I hope that I'm going to be able to do it justice because, you know, there's a lot of variables that have to be taken into consideration. I will try to touch base on other variables apart from my own, but it's difficult to pinpoint. So whatever I say here now, take that information and then apply it to the best way in your circumstances. And if there are any more questions now, in the future, whenever, keep asking. These threads can be as long as they need to be in order to have everybody comfortable with the answers that they get. Let me just address, first of all, the similarities. And they are both inert. And when I say inert, I say that cautiously because inert means it doesn't change the pH of the water. But it depends on the pH of the water. How good is that for your orchid roots? And then you may need to adjust some pH up and down, depending on what your water is. So if you soak Lekka for 48 hours and you measure the pH and it is at seven, then the pH in your pot will be seven, but you have to reduce the pH of your nutrient water to such a degree in order to balance out that seven pH. So both of them are inert. Let me give you an example in my case. My Lekka, and my lava rock gets cleaned in RO water at a pH of eight. I use RO water because my water is awful. The quality is so bad. So when it comes to cleaning and flushing out Lekka and lava rock, I will start with tap water to get the major debris out, but I will finish by boiling both media in RO water, and then I let Lekka soak in the plain RO water, and I let my lava rock dry out. The pH in my bucket is eight, so that means whatever is going in the pot is eight, as the Lekka is inert and won't change my pH. And I have to, with my nutrient solution, I have to reduce that pH to about 5.8, doing a guesstimate calculation that from the reservoir with the wicking through the inert media at a pH of eight, I'm balancing out low pH and getting to about 6.3, 6.5, covering all the aspects of the nutrients that the orchid can absorb within the correct pH range. So that is the first thing. And that is because they're inorganic, that is their similarity the difference being that with Lekka, you have to keep it soaked, you have to know the pH of your water, and then do the nutrient accordingly. Lava rock. Again, I don't soak my lava rock, I let it dry out. And then whatever is in the pot, I have my nutrient solution at 5.8 and sometimes 6.3, and that is then what I pour into the pots that have lava rock as media. And that is then the ratio and the range of uh, nutrition pH that I give the orchids in lava rock because I am not soaking my lava rock. So it will only be in the pot from a pH point of view, whatever I pour into it and whatever is in the reservoir at the bottom. There's another similarity that I like to address and it's the control. The control of watering and fertilizer, both of them are the same. You have optimum control of what goes in your pot and there is no breakdown. And both of them 
will retain a lot of minerals. And I'm going to show you, for example, that the LECA, I have a better mineral control over, mineral buildup, because it's much more forgiving when it comes to flushing out. And every time the reservoir is empty, I go by pot bases, not by shelf bases. Whatever the pot does is how I respond. So whenever that reservoir is empty, I take the pot, I take the mask, and I flush the mask with plain RO water through. And I don't change the pH on that water because that's a waste. It's just going from you know up to down. It's just a flush. And only then do I fill the reservoir in with the nutrient solution at 5.8 again. So the flushing and the mineral buildup on LECA is so much more forgiving. Lava rock, on the other hand, completely different because of its super, super porous attributes and texture. That is gorgeous absorption of minerals and mineral retention surface. So that is a little bit more dangerous and I will show you right here an example of my Tolumnia. I must have been confused. I thought I was going to make a Tolumnia the size of a Vanda. So put my ego in check, but you can see the mineral build up here. Now, if that were Lekka, it would be already flushed off since I've not been using fertilizer for at least the past six weeks. And Lekka would have flushed that out, but Lava Rock doesn't. So there is that little bit of a difference when it comes to how the mineral buildup in the pots will differ between lava rock and leka. Leka much more forgiving in that front. The next point I want to mention as well is the size. The size of the leka as opposed to the size of the lava rock also determines what are you using it for. So I have found that using large, like let's say, let's say large, not large specifically, but your normal bag of leka. You get it, you clean it, you sterilize it, you're going to repot and you just take a handful and you just keep filling in. So you have a mixture between small, medium and large LECA. There is a difference though that I have come across in recent years that it is better to differentiate whether you can just go with all the sizes dumbled up as an established orchid or if you were to address a seedling and to go with all the sizes jumbled up in a seedling is not as good as an idea as just picking out the smaller lecker. Because seedlings need more water retention and you will get a higher water retention by picking out the smaller lecker as opposed to if I were to mix these, the larger lecker will already give me more air around the roots. So I hope that makes sense, but this is my way of putting seedlings straight into a semi-hydro or a self-watering setup by picking out the smaller leka. I do the same thing with lava rock. So I have my small lava rock here. This was all from one bag, but when it comes to cleaning and separating and drying, I have tubs now with different sizes, depending on what I want to use it for. So for small or finer rooted orchids, lava rock, perfect, even seedlings, and for roots that are a little bit larger and fleshier, like you have with cattleyas and some dendrobiums as well, they're a little bit thicker and fleshier. That is a different root structure as to what you see here on the dendrobium. So that is, for me, the important factor as well, what size am I going to go with based on media retention and what is more favorable depending on the roots and depending on if I'm dealing with a mature orchid or with a seedling. When it comes to a setup, for example, I have self-watering here and I have classic semi-hydro. These pots have all got their holes in the back, but they are classic semi-hydro and not self-watering. Self-watering is very, very dependent on the wicking efficacy of the media used. And LECA in its makeup is much more water retentive than plain lava rock. So lava rock sometimes needs a little bit of tweaking and a little bit of help because there is not much wicking going on because of these porous gaps that they have. The wicking will saturate this lava rock on top 
it will only saturate maybe half the lava rock. And so it repeats going up the layers bit by bit until you reach the top of the pot. So the reservoir will be very saturated and then it'll wick to here because of water displacement. And then the size of pot becomes an issue if you're gonna use lava rock in a classic semi-hydro setup. I do not use lava rock in self-watering because I would have to add another media in order to fill in the blanks. If this were all lava rock, I would not get the wicking successfully to the top unless I put strips of microfiber all the way up. But for me, that is not conducive or not effective because when it comes to repotting, that is a nightmare. And I already struggle with big root balls. I don't need more of microfiber tangled in with good roots because usually the good roots are on the outside of the pot. So it's, um, it's a fine line. I have, however, done the following and I'm starting to test Akadama. And so far I'm liking what I'm seeing and that I mix a very, very water retentive media together with lava rock, no matter what size, and try to combat the dryness as it moves up the pot by layering a very wicking water retentive media. Now, I have used a lot of ceramics in my past, but I know that that is not readily available all over the world. And it's also not readily available here for me locally. And I'm quite done with being relying on shipping and all that stuff. I don't want to do that anymore. And that's why I'm introducing Akadama into my collection to give it a chance to see how it works as opposed to ceramics. And this is for the bonsai. This is dry Akadama. This is wet Akadama. And it is a little bit more flimsy to the touch. If I were to squeeze this, I would make a paste and this would just fall into a powder like that. Just crumbles and this is wet and becomes like a paste. But it is super water retentive and it doesn't fall apart. And that is the interest that I have doing lava rock right now only in semi-hydro because here I'm testing and trying to grow on a hibiki keiki. And in here I have large lava rock on the bottom with a layer of akadama in between, smaller lava rock in the middle. The orchid is around the akadama and the lava rock. And then I filled the top with akadama because in this case now it's a seedling. Once the keiki is off the mother plant, it becomes a seedling. And my top layer here is just to make sure to encourage root growth. And that looks pretty good to me. Those are new roots. And that is with Akadama as a top layer. So it is important for me to mention that yes, there are similarities and differences between Lekka and Lava Rock. However, it's not just a cut and dry, this is this and that is that because based on any different kind of circumstance, climate, time of year, it can be tweaked and made to work regardless of the fact it doesn't work in the summer, but it does in the winter. It can be made to work all year round. And that is what I'm working towards with the Akadama, using it as a top dressing now in order to make sure that my pot stays nice and wet. In this case, as an environment to grow on a little seedling in lava rock. So why am I using lava rock as opposed to leka on that one? Well, I have hibiki in leka already. I didn't differentiate between the sizes. I just put in all sizes of leka and my hibiki is doing fantastic. Because I'm growing this one on to give away, I don't know whoever gets it, how they grow. So I can grow in this method, this setup, more on the wet side for my climate, but being lava rock a little bit more drier, it can also be then transitioned into something that is a little bit drier for another environment. So it's the best of both worlds, in my opinion, regarding dendrobium seedlings that I'm going to give away. The next thing that I do have here is my dendrobium aberrans crossed with polysema. In lava rock only, in a classic semi-hydro setup, and there is absolutely no Akadama in there 
at all. No ceramics, no other wicking media, but the pot is tiny. And here is another way to manipulate how the two medias can be more water retentive as opposed to less. You have a big pot. If I were to pot this one up, or let's say another dendrobium into a big pot like that with lava rock only, I would be in trouble pretty quickly or I would have to really go after it and watering. And I'm not going to do either of those. I don't want to be in trouble and I don't want to be constantly watering. So this little dendrobium is in lava rock only and it was a seedling when I got it. But because the pot is so small, I have shortened the ratio of the wicking and I can really control the watering as in letting it sometimes grow a little bit drier and then amping up the watering again once it gets going and growing, which it is doing so again. And this is a sure way for me to secure the watering control in a seedling on dendrobiums until their roots adapt to a very wet or moist environment. Because sometimes transitioning a dendrobium is a little bit harder in my opinion than it would be a cattleya. I find cattleya quite predictable, but uh, dendrobiums, yeah, they, they can protest rather quickly and then they go downhill rather quickly as well because they need to expend so much energy in doing new growths and new roots. And if the new roots aren't happy, it's, it's an ongoing cycle and eventually the dendrobium will capitulate. It can take years, but it's a fight and I don't want that fight. So it goes into lava rock and I'm not messing around with the experimentation on Lekka for specific dendrobiums that like to be a little bit drier in the winter. Your temperatures will also make a big difference if you're going a little bit drier or you're not easing off on watering because of the climate. I have to contend with a coldish winter. My lowest indoor temperatures are 16 degrees Celsius and I want to make sure that I'm not taxing the roots too much by keeping them so wet and especially on dendrobiums that like to be a little bit warm. Inert media will cool down the roots by a certain amount of degrees on top of everything else. So all these factors need to be taken into consideration. And for me, the control of lava rock with dendrobiums is fantastic. Any repot should be done when new roots grow. Any. It's your backup plan if the older roots in the pot were to fail. And here you can see, this is my Dendrobium auranti flameum. And I got her and she was in sphagnum moss, which was great. That means already you know the roots that are existing are used to and like a wet environment. So that is awesome for any kind of transition into inorganic media, but careful to not overdo it with regards to the size of your media because new roots need to find their way into the pot as soon as possible and I don't see the point of letting them crawl over two, three centimeters or an inch of material before they find a gap. So these are fine little roots and they are in fine little lava rock, small chunks of lava rock. Because it came in sphagnum moss. I have in here, in the pot, layered, just to bulk it up, large lava rock, a layer of akadama to bring my wicking up to a level. The roots are in akadama because they came from sphagnum moss, which is much more water retentive than even small lava rock. And then I top dressed it with small lava rock. So this is mainly lava rock, but again, I'm helping myself with the environment of the pot by using a material that keeps it much more moister than any kind of lava rock would be. And I am using a more shallower pot as well, made even more shallow because of where the large lava rock comes to, about here. So for finer roots, smaller media, smaller lava rock and smaller lecker. I could cultivate this dendrobium in lecker, but I've had such good results with lava rock that I'm not going to change it. What I did do, however, and I will put up a video card for what happened with an epidendrum 
in lava rock, two actually. And that's why I have stopped growing cattleya types, cattleya lions, orchids in lava rock, because if they are vigorous and they need to be checked and their roots need to be cleaned, the damage that lava rock can do to roots is exponential. It is so unforgiving when it comes time for a repot. That's why I have stopped using lava rock for all the cattleya alliances that includes the epidendrum. When it comes to my roots of my dendrobiums, when I were to then change their pot and they needed repotting, I would then take a bigger pot and just gently pour out the orchid from the pot that it has and up pot based on the fact that it is inert media and I do not have to be fussing around with roots. I may choose to up pot with leka surrounding the open space in order to transition them into leka and then the subsequent repot would be able to be more aggressive around the old roots. But as dendrobiums go, they don't really, you can see depending on the size of the stems, they don't really take up or crawl and climb out of a pot the way cattleyas do. So this one was one of the first in my collection. It's been with me for at least three years in this setup and it's doing fine and I don't need to change it again for another couple of years at least. And I'm not worried about the media breaking down either. So it can just grow until the whole pot is full and then we will repot. But it'll take like another two to three more years simply because the orchid isn't crawling out of the pot. So it doesn't need a lot of intervention. When it comes to Leka and Cattleyas though, some have a climbing habit, some don't, and some just get so big so fast because of the length of their rhizome. There needs to be, in my case, because I am limited on space indoors and I have to bring mine in for certain months of the year, I have to address my orchids almost every two years and check their root system. And Leka is so much more forgiving when it comes to cleaning up orchids. It is, oh, the roots and everything, the damage I did on my epidendrums and my coilostylus, it was, yeah, I was nervous about it, but they're doing fine because they were growing roots at the time I was doing the transition. But the damage is so much more substantial when it comes to lava rock. But you can see here a little Leopoldii seedling in a small semi-hydro setup where I can control the watering and it has smaller leka as the media to maintain the water retention. There's nothing else in here except leka, and the wicking is fine. Now, if you ever see another one of my Leopoldia, as you're gonna say it's not working, but trust me, it's working. I'm just having issues with two other seedlings, and uh, it's not the Leopoldia or the setup, it's me. <laughs> but I brought out a seedling that I happen to not have in Ceramis, and most of mine are, or they are mixed with ceramis. I just wanted to bring you out a seedling and show you how small the leka bits are in here that I picked out as opposed to if I just took the bag in its entirety and used whatever size came out first and just poured it in. So this is much, much better for water retention and for wicking on a cattleya seedling. I am not, again, using small lava rock on cattleya roots. If you are not growing in some kind of a PVC plastic container, then, you know, if you're growing in clay, you don't have to keep stressing the orchids and you can go from pot to pot to pot. Everything is inert and you just get a bigger pot, set it in and continue filling up and around. As I can't do that, I have to work with what I have. And for me, the difference in manipulating Leka size lava rock size based on what I see on the root front, how many times do I need to interfere based on the growth habit of the orchid, I make up my mind. One exception, again, there's always an exception, tolumnias. All big lava chunks, small fine roots, big lava chunks. And I tried tolumnias in semi-hydro and I failed. I know it can be done and I am not over trying, but this is not the time for the budget to be buying orchids in order to try something that might fail. This is the time to take care of the orchids I have and that were close to failing just because I went all Rambo on the fertilizer. Again, 
Tolumnias are Tolumnias. There's no way you're going to grow a van sized Tolumnia, no matter how much fertilizer you chuck at it. But the point here is the exception of what I'm doing in order to grow Tolumnias in my climate. Very, very airy, very, very spacious, big chunks of lava rock in order to give them what they need before I start experimenting and trying semi-hydro again. So that is the difference. Fine roots, big chunks. It is a Tolumnia. So I wonder if I did your question justice. I will only know when you see this video and you let me know what you think, if it answers your question, or when you look back on what you've been doing with your inorganic media, let me know if what I'm saying resonates with you and then you have that moment, oh, okay, that's right, I did that, but I didn't do that, or anything relevant to the question that you had. I hope that I made sense and I hope that it was easy to follow. Again, the variables are massive, climate, temperature, hungry orchid, thirsty orchid, thin roots, fat roots, water retention, less water retention, growing a seedling, growing a mature plant. Is it a climber? Has it got a long rhizome? These are all the considerations I was trying to put into one video with regards to the difference between LECA and lava rock. Thank you for your question. I really appreciate it. I hope that everybody got something out of it if they were watching. And if you have any further suggestions to add on to my thoughts, please feel free to do that in the comments below for everybody to read and let's talk. I love it. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you so much, Granny Fanny, for your faith in my opinion. Looking forward to hearing what you have to say about this video. Take care and stay safe. Bye.